So uh, today's like new release was one I so I was trying to watch mostly films from Filmstruck and uh, skip all the new releases, but there's a handful of films in theaters right now that may only be there for a week, so I'm like, I gotta see it. And this was one I could not miss. This is Marielle Heller's Can You Ever Forgive Me? Marielle Heller made her debut um, when I was doing a year with women with um, Diary of a Teenage Girl. Not my favorite film from that year, but a very memorable debut featuring a very striking lead performance. Um, and again, this film has a striking lead performance from um, Melissa McCarthy, who is one of the great performers of our time. Um, I will always have a soft spot for her because I was a Gilmore Girls fan, but I'm so glad to see her just breaking out and doing these amazing uh, lead performances. And, you know, she does some bad ones, too, where she's always good, but the films aren't good. And for once, um, this is a film where the film around her deserves her immense talent. So it is based on the life of real-life biographer and literary forger uh lee israel and i may actually have one of her felt books i'm just actually going to go look in my collection um because i have several books about tulula bankhead and one of her biographies that she wrote was about tulula bankhead so i'm going to see if i have it but basically we're at the tail end of her or the mid end of her um career she hasn't published anything in a while the things she wants to write about aren't sellable we're in the the height of as the film reminds us Tom Clancy's um, reign as the literary, like, number one writer on the best New York Times bestseller list. And so you have this woman who's out of step with, with what sells and who's a bit acerbic. And that's difficult for people to deal with, especially women. And there's a great scene um, with her agent, played by the wonderful Jane Curtin, where she's like, you can be an asshole when you're rich, but until then you got to be... Um, a little nicer and she's just like fuck that and what's so wonderful about the, the character as created by McCarthy is that she is tough as nails and she does keep people at arm's length um, but she's incredibly relatable because she's someone who's been hurt a lot and who keeps people um, at length in order not to hurt and a lot of us feel that way so um, but the one thing she does love is her cat which you know as soon as you see that it's sick things are not going to go well so spoilers for anyone who's afraid, uh, who doesn't want to watch a film with a sick cat, watch out. Um, so in order to um, pay her bills, she starts forging letters, um, basically writing in the style of some of the great memoirists of our time. Um, one of the, some of her letters uh, pretending to be Noel Coward actually made it into his biography at one point because they... Um, were so good that it wasn't until she confessed that, like, actually, Bra, I wrote those, um, that they were pulled from the biography. So that's kind of, that's crazy. She supposedly um, forged 400 letters over the time and at one point started actually stealing from archives, copying the stolen ones, hiding those back in the archives, and then reselling the real thing so that... Um, when it authenticated these things were real because they really were real. Um, the film is mostly her and Richard E. Grant is her friend Jack, who later acted as a fence for her when she was placed on, on, a, on a, a watch list. Um, the film basically follows them as they become friends, her dealing with the life that she's in, um, the, just the, t the difficulties of, of being an artistic person who... Um, has never able to really come into their own as a writer, find a voice that people want to celebrate. Um, but there's a great moment where she says she was a better Dorothy Parker than Dorothy Parker because uh, one of the Dorothy Parkerisms that she coined, she heard back, repeated back at her, even though it wasn't really a Dorothy Parkerism, it was her writing. And, and I think um, it's examination of the way an artistic person um, can feel about their work, about putting their self out there, about, um, I think, ghostwriting. There's a lot of people who, who end up being ghostwriters. <coughs> and the desire to be sort of known for who you are. Or, as a biographer, she wrote these great biographies, but they, she didn't stand out as a writer. And a good biographer shouldn't really stand out as a writer. 
but then if you can't stand out as a writer, then you can't get money to write, and it's this whole vicious cycle. Um, and the film, I think, explores that really well. It also explores, I'm going to bring my cat into the video of Chef Come. Come on. Ugh. It explores. Ugh. No. <laughs> okay, that did not work. Never mind. I was trying to put the cat in the video. It explores the way in which certain people um, only really relate to animals, and specifically cats. This is a great cat person movie. <coughs> if you've ever been a cat person, you'll you'll like the cat stuff in this movie. There goes my cat. Um, what else? It's a movie set in New York that feels very New York. It feels very cold. It feels, it always shows her either walking or in public transportation. Um, so it shows you a certain um, socioeconomic place that she is in New York. Because uh, you see some certain New York movies where all the characters are always taking taxis and you're like, that's not a lot of people. Um, the fact that she felt, you could feel how cold she was at the point where she breaks and starts selling these um, forgeries is, I think, a, a really well done. The chemistry between Grant and McCarthy is amazing. They really do feel like like two bitchy old queens, um, which was quite good. There's a, a moment with um, Anna Devere Smith that comes towards the end that was amazing. She's one of the great actresses. It's always good to see her. Actress writers. It's always good to see her pop up. And also, like I said, there's about two scenes with Jane, with Jane Curtin. And the minute she showed up, I was like, oh, it's Jane Curtin. Because um, how do you not love Jane Curtin? Um, so, originally, a little background, this screenplay was written by Nicole Holof Center, who was going to direct with Julianne Moore in the um, role. However, things shifted and the screenplay went to Marielle Heller. Uh, Julianne Moore dropped out and Melissa McCarthy came in. I think the film um, works better with a, a person like McCarthy who very much can disappear. In, I mean, she has a comic um, presence where you know, like in her com comedies, she is playing Melissa McCarthy, right? But in, in her more dramatic performances, she's able to really disappear and become somebody else. And I think Julianne Moore has gotten to a point in her career where she's always Julianne Moore. Um, and I don't mean that as a diss. You know, Cary Grant was always Cary Grant. But I think you needed, you really needed um, somebody who could disappear a little bit more. And I think McCarthy does that really, really well. Uh, so this is in theaters right now. I think it's in limited release. But it's actually in two theaters here in Atlanta. It's at the Midtown and at Phipps. So if you can find it, definitely go see it. Um, great soundtrack. There's a really good Paul Simon song, really good Lou Reed song. And overall, just a, an enjoyable sort of dramedy, if you will. Um, now, like, obviously, when the book came out, there was some criticisms of the ethics of supporting a memoir by um, someone, a, a thief, if you will. She's a literary thief. I don't know. A forger. Um, but, I mean, there's always, you know, has anyone lobbied the same criticisms at Goodfellas? I don't know. I don't think so. So, you know, wrestle with that uh, ethics on your own time, I guess. This is um, Can You Ever Forgive Me, written by Nicole Holof Center, directed by Marielle Heller, and I recommend it. Great performance from Melissa McCarthy.